വെൽക്കം ടു ബയോളജി ട്യൂട്ടർ ബയോളജി ട്യൂട്ടറിന്റെ പുതിയൊരു വീഡിയോയിലേക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും സ്വാഗതം ഇന്ന് നാം ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഫുഡ് ബോൺ ഡിസീസസ് അതിലെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് എം സി ക്യൂസ് ആണ് ഇഫ് യു ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് ചാനൽ പ്ലീസ് സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ഡോൺ ഫോർ ഗെറ്റ് ടു ക്ലിക്ക് ദ ബെൽ ബട്ടൺ ടു ഗെറ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് നോട്ടിഫിക്കേഷൻസ് ഫുഡ് ബോൺ ഡിസീസസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ന്യൂറോ ലത്തൈറിസം സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ന്യൂറോ ലത്തൈറിസം ഈസ് അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് the consumption of lathyrus sativus or grass pea the primary toxin responsible for neurolathyrism is beta or dab symptoms include progressive and irreversible spastic paralysis of the lower limbs the condition is prevalent in regions with drought prone climates where other food sources are scarce conclusion which of the following best describes the primary cause and clinical outcome of neurolathyrism options a lathyrus sativus is the only plant responsible and it causes temporary paralysis b lathyrus sativus contains beta or dab which causes permanent spastic paralysis c neurolathyrism occurs only in tropical climates D the toxin responsible is or dab causing both upper and lower limb paralysis which is the answer here answer is B lathyrus sativus contains beta or dab which causes permanent spastic paralysis explanation lathyrus sativus contains beta or dab or dab and the condition leads to permanent lower limb paralysis especially in resource poor areas next second question aflatoxins aflatoxins statements aflatoxins are produced by aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasiticus aflatoxin b1 is considered the most potent hepatocarcinogen aflatoxins are commonly found in peanuts corn and tree nuts regulatory limits for aflatoxins are the same worldwide due to their carcinogenicity conclusion what best summarizes the characteristics and concerns of aflatoxins options a aflatoxins are produced by multiple molds and can be found in all food crops b aflatoxin b1 is highly carcinogenic and is prim- primarily a concern in grain and nut storage C regulatory limits for aflatoxins vary by country despite their non carcinogenicity D aflatoxins are safe at low levels but accumulate in fatty tissues which is the correct answer over here the answer is C regulatory limits for aflatoxins vary by country despite their non carcinogenicity explanation why aflatoxins are highly carcinogenic countries establish different limits based on detection technology and acceptable risk levels third question ergotism statements ergotism results from ingesting alkaloid produced by claviceps purpurea symptoms of ergotism include hallucinations convulsions and gangrene it predominantly affects cereal crops like rye Historically ergotism has been linked to St Anthony's fire in medieval Europe. Conclusion which of the following best describes ergotism and its historical context? Options A ergotism is caused by fungal contamination in tropical climates only. B claviceps purpurea affects all cereal crops equally causing hallucinations. C ergotism symptoms include gangrene linked historically to st anthony's fire d ergotism has been eradicated in modern farming with no health concern today which is the answer here answer is c ergotism symptoms include gangrene linked historically to st anthony's fire here explanation ergot alkaloids from claviceps purpurea cause severe symptoms and historical outbreak were referred to as st anthony's fire fourth question epidemic dropsy statements epidemic dropsy is caused by the consumption of mustard oil adulterated with 
Ardimon oil. Symptoms include edema, glaucoma, and breathlessness. Sanguinarin in Ardimon oil is toxic and affects the cardiovascular system. The condition is commonly seen in countries with mustard oil use, usage in cooking. Conclusion. What best characterizes the cause and symptoms of epidemic dropsy? Options A. Sanguinarin causes neurological symptoms mainly affecting mustard consumers. B. Epidemic dropsy is a cardiovascular condition from argimon oil adulteration. C. Glaucoma is the most severe symptom of epidemic dropsy. D. The use of pure mustard oil prevents epidemic dropsy entirely answer over here your answer is b epidemic dropsy is a cardiovascular condition from argimon oil adulteration explanation sanguinarin in argimon oil causes cardiovascular symptoms primarily affecting populations using mustard oil fifth question typhoid fever statements typhoid fever is caused by salmonella typhi the disease is transmitted via the fecal oral route. Symptoms include prolonged fever, abdominal pain, and rash. Typhoid vaccines are effective in preventing infection. Conclusion: Which option best summarizes the transmission and control of typhoid fever? Option A. Typhoid fever is spread by airborne droplets and prevented by vaccines. B. Salmonella typhi is waterborne and vaccination is the only preventive measure. C. Typhoid spreads via the fecal oral route with vaccination providing protection. D. Antibiotics are ineffective treating in treating typhoid due to its resistance. Here which is the answer? The answer is C. Typhoid spreads via the fecal oral route with vaccination providing protection. Explanation. Salmonella typhi spreads through contaminated water or food and vaccines are effective for prevention. Sixth question, Salmonellosis statement, Salmonellosis is caused by multiple Salmonella serotypes, primarily Salmonella enteritis and Salmonella typhimurium. It is commonly associated with contaminated poultry, eggs and dairy products. Symptoms include gastroenteritis abdominal cramps and diarrhea. Salmonellosis can be severe in immunocompromised individuals and young children. Conclusion: Which of the following best explains the transmission and risk factors associated with salmonellosis? Options A. Only salmonella enteritis causes salmonellosis and it is limited to dairy products. B. Multiple salmonella serotypes can cause infection with severity higher in immunocompromised groups. See, salmonellosis is a respiratory disease with severe symptoms in all age groups. The only X transmit salmonella as it cannot survive on other foods. Which is Here answer is B. Multiple salmonella serotypes can cause infection with severity higher in immunocompromised groups. Explanation salmonellosis is caused by various salmonella serotypes and its severity varies with host immunity and age. Seventh question, Staphylococcal intoxication. Statements, Staphylococcal food poisoning is due to the ingestion of enterotoxin produced by Staphylococcus aureus. The toxins are heat stable and can survive cooking processes. Symptoms appear quickly, typically within 1 to 6 hours after consumption. Staphylococcal intoxication is often associated with improperly stored or handled foods. Conclusion What is the best characterization of Staphylococcal food poisoning? A. It is caused by direct bacterial invasion of the gut. Symptoms develop slowly days after ingestion. The toxins are heat sensitive, so proper cooking can prevent intoxication. The Staphylococcus aureus enterotoxins cause rapid onset food poison. Which is the answer? Here answer is D. Staphylococcus aureus enterotoxins cause rapid onset food poisoning. Explanation Staphylococcal food 
poisoning is caused by heat stable toxins leading to rapid onset symptoms shortly after ingestion eighth question botulism statements botulism botulism is caused by clostridium botulinum which produces a potential neurotoxin the toxin blocks acetylcholine release leading to muscle paralysis infant botulism can occur from spore in honey which germinate in the infant gut symptoms of botulism include difficulty in swallowing muscle weakness and respiratory paralysis conclusion which of the following best describes the cause and effects effects of botulism option a clostridium botulinum infection is due to inhaling spores affecting only adults b the botulinum toxin causes muscle rigidity by increasing acetylcholine release botulinum botulism results from a neurotoxin that inhibit acetylcholine leading to paralysis d botulism can cause only occur sorry botulism can only occur in infants consuming honey which is the answer here answer is c botulism results from a neurotoxin that inhibit acetylcholine leading to paralysis explanation botulinum toxin blocks acetylcholine causing muscle weakness and paralysis and it can affect all ages depends on depending on exposure Ninth question bacillus cereus food poisoning statements bacillus cereus produces two types of toxins an emetic toxin and an enterotoxin the emetic toxin causes vomiting while the enterotoxin causes diarrhea bacillus cereus is commonly found in starchy foods like rice and pasta heat treatment can kill bacillus cereus but its spores and toxins may survive conclusion which of the following is true regarding bacillus cereus food poisoning options only one toxin type is produced causing primary diarrhea b the emetic toxin affects dairy products more than rice c bacillus cereus produces both emetic and enterotoxins associated with starchy foods D. Proper cooking completely prevents all bacillus cereus foodborne illness. Which is the answer here? Answer is C. Bacillus cereus produces both emetic and endotoxins associated with starchy foods. Bacillus cereus produces two toxins that cause different symptoms. Spores can survive cooking, especially in starchy foods. Tenth question E. coli diarrhea. Statements E. coli strains. Causing diarrhea is often enterotoxigenic ETEC or EHEC. EHEC strains like E. coli O157 can cause hemorrhagic colitis and hemolytic uremic syndrome. ETEC strains cause travelase diarrhea by producing enterotoxins. Proper cooking and hygiene are effective in preventing E. coli infections. Conclusion Which best describes E. coli strains and the infections they cause? Options A. Only EHEC strains are pathogenic in humans. B. ETEC strains are more dangerous than EHEC, often causing HUS, means hemolytic uremic syndrome. Both EHEC ETEC strains can cause diarrhea with EHEC linked to HUS. E. coli infections are common in dairy products only. Which is the answer? Here, answer is C. Both EHEC and ETEC strains can cause diarrhea with EHEC linked to HUS. Explanation ETEC causes mild diarrhea while EHEC can cause severe disease including HUS. Thank you. If you like this channel, please share and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell button to get notifications. All the best for your exams.